This is the sixth video on how to build an engine in the card game Dominion. And in this video, we'll talk about buys and gains, which are the fourth key component of an engine. First, to define key terms, buying a card refers specifically to purchasing it during the buy phase. You expend one buy and some amount of money, and then you get a card from the supply. Gaining is a broader term, which refers to acquiring a card by any means. So if you buy a card, you are also gaining the card. But not all means of gaining a card count as buying. There are many ways to gain a card directly, e.g. via certain action cards, that gain you a card in ways other than buying it during your buy phase. So this is sort of a, uh, you know, all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares scenario, where gaining is the broader term that encompasses buying. I put a little asterisk here because there are technically a few minor exceptions to what I just said above, where you can get a card into your deck without gaining it, or buy a card and not gain anything. Those exceptions are incredibly minor and not worth pointing out. Um, I just put that there so I don't get any, well, technically is in the comments from someone who wants to be a stickler. Um, plus buy gives you the ability to buy multiple cards per turn. So there's some cards that will give you the effect of having an extra buy. And what that means is instead of being allowed to buy a single card per turn, you're allowed to buy two or three or more. So you can spend your money and divvy it up across buying multiple cards. And then gainers refer to cards that just give you the ability to gain additional cards directly without buying them. So you'll see that some cards, and we'll look at a few examples in a minute, don't give you the ability to buy through cards, they just give you the cards themselves. Now let's talk about why buys and gains are significant for engines. Uh, first, by point of contrast, buys and gains are usually not super significant for big money decks because big money plays a simple strategy where you gain usually you know, the one best card available to your deck each turn. You're trying to get straight to buying provinces fast, so you're not going to take any detours to get extra plus buy to help you acquire multiple cards to then build up your deck long term. Uh, you don't want the game to last that long. If you have six dollars, sure if you had two buys you could buy two silvers instead of one, but you're perfectly happy buying just one gold for six instead. And then as soon as you start hitting eight, you're buying a single province. So the plus buy doesn't pay off a whole lot. By contrast, engines need plus buy for two crucial reasons. The first is that an engine involves a lot more components. You're putting a lot of actions into your deck, they're doing a whole lot of things for you, and a fully functioning engine is going to involve a much larger total number of cards acquired than a big money deck is. And so if you can only get a single card into your deck each turn, the engine is going to be very slow to build. You have 10 cards, and the next turn that's 11, next turn that's 12. Each turn acquiring one card, you're going to be really slow. And then secondly, you're going to need extra gains in the final turns to overcome points deficits. We said that big money is usually quicker to scoring points. It builds a simpler deck that starts hitting eight sooner. And so it usually takes the early points lead. And that's not a threat as long as you can outscore it in the final turns. But outscoring usually involves getting two or three provinces per turn for the last few turns or getting a province and two or three duchies. And so if you're limited to getting one gain, then the best you can do per turn is gain one province. And if you're doing that, but slower than big money is, then you're not actually going to beat that deck at all. And so the real important thing here is that you be able to get multiple new cards into your deck per turn. And this is why we're grouping together buying and gaining, because both of those serve that same function of helping you get multiple cards that you want into your deck. And whether you do that by buying them both or by buying one and gaining the card indirectly via another effect, you're sort of accomplishing the same thing. And so this is why buying and gaining are sort of fundamentally strategically more or less equivalent. And then the last point that we'll uh, talk about is that having extra buys and gains in your deck is very important for pile-up potential. Uh, and that either means controlling when the province pile ends and bringing a game to a close that way, or in emptying three piles at a time in into the game via the three pile rule, which the game ends because three supply piles have emptied. The more buys and gains you have, the more potential your deck has to threaten to empty uh, the piles on a given turn. And that's going to put more pressure on your opponent because they sort of have to play around the threat in the back of their mind that you might bring the game to a close unexpectedly, and that can influence their strategy. And you'll see that in some examples at the end of the video. So now we'll look at a few examples of cards that count as buys and gains, starting with a few examples from the base set. So we have Market. Uh, market is a cantrip. We said mentally you should subtract out plus one card and plus one action. And you'll see the real benefit of Market is it gives you plus one buy and plus one coin. So playing a Market each turn, means you're able to buy two cards instead of one. If you play two markets, you'll be able to buy three cards instead of two because you start with your plus one buy naturally and it goes up each time you play a market. Here's an example of a gainer. Workshop. It doesn't give you any plus buy. You can still only buy one card per turn if you play Workshop. 
Um, but when you play it, you can directly get a card costing up to four. So if there's a bunch of cards costing four or less in the kingdom that you want, for example, a bunch of villages and smithies, you can use Workshop to gain those cards directly so you don't have to expend buys on them. And then you can put the buys towards things you actually want that maybe cost more than four and you can't gain via Workshop. Uh, notably, Workshop can also gain itself. So you can have this little snowball effect sometimes where Workshop can gain another Workshop, then you draw that Workshop and play it to gain another Workshop and so forth. Um, but Workshop is nice because it can gain you additional cards. And here we have Artisan, a third card from the base set. Uh, this one is specifically in the second edition of Ace. Uh, Artisan can gain you cards uh, costing up to five. Part of the benefit is it uh, gains the card directly to your hand so you can play it immediately. Uh, another benefit is that unlike Workshop, uh, it can gain five cost cards, whereas Workshop only gains four. That's a pretty significant jump in power because a lot of the strong cards in Dominion are at that $5 price point. And so going from four to five is a huge jump. For example, in the end game, Artisan is really helpful because it can score you an additional three points per play at the end by just gaining a duchy in the final turn or two. Whereas Workshop, the best it can do is gain you an estate for one point. Uh, so part of the reason Artisan costs six and Workshop only costs three is for that $4 to $5 jump in which card it's able to gain. Now we'll look at a few cards that I think are sort of deceptively buys and gains. Um, first, a few cards that I would consider buy neutral uh, or gain neutral. Um, first is Forum. So Forum says, uh, when you buy this, plus one buy. And so it sort of looks like, you know, just like Market, it's got plus one buy on it. Uh, the difference is, <laughs> you know, again, much like you have to sort of track out plus one action and plus one card, um, plus one card every time the card's in your deck, plus one action every time you play it, you should subtract out mentally plus one buy every time you buy a card, because it costs one buy to buy something. So the reason market counts as plus buy is because every time you play it, you get plus buy. And playing a card doesn't spend buy. But if you look at work, uh, not workshop, if you look at forum here, the point at which this card gives you plus buy is not as a result of playing the card. Playing the card has nothing related to plus buy. You get the plus buy when you buy it. So what's that mean? It basically means Forum doesn't cost a buy. It, if I wanted to buy two non-Forum cards, like let's say I had 30 money or something and I wanted to buy two provinces, Forum wouldn't help me with that. I can't buy the Forum to get a second buy. Why? Well, because if I spend a buy on the Forum and I get plus one buy back, I'm still at one buy. So you can't look at a kingdom, see Forum and be like, oh good, plus buy is around. I see the text plus buy because in this context, you're not actually getting plus one buy at all. Um, it's breaking even. What it does mean is if you kind of wanted a forum in your deck anyway, but you were limited on plus buys, forum is a card you can add without costing you plus buys. So for example, if I had $13 in one buy and I wanted to buy a province anyway for eight, I have five left over, but you know, I couldn't buy a market in a province, even though that's 13 total, if I only have one buy, um, those are two different cards, so I can't buy them both. I could, however, say, oh, I've got $13 in one buy. I'll buy a Forum, because Forum's a nice card that's never really bad for your deck. And then I spend a buy on Forum, I get that plus one buy back. I'm still at plus one buy, and now I can spend the last eight of my coins on profits. So the real benefit of Forum is not that it helps you get other cards. Uh, you should read this little effect as just being, Forum doesn't cost you a buy. You can buy a Forum if you want, and it won't otherwise undermine your ability to buy things but uh, Forum itself isn't really plus buy in the sense of helping you get additional cards. Uh, secondly, we have some cards that give you plus buy or gain you cards, but by first forcing you to get rid of a card. So for example, Trade Route gives you plus one buy, but it forces you to trash a card from your hand. Similarly, Forager, plus one buy, trash a card. Thirdly, Remodel, here's a base set card. This one doesn't give you plus buy, but it gains you a card and requires trashing a card. Uh, so these cards, I would say, are only situationally um, plus buy slash gains. And in the right context, they can definitely work, but it requires playing around a bit. And the reason is because, like we said, the main reason we value plus buy slash gains is the ability to put multiple useful cards into our deck each turn. If I've got 10 cards now, I would like to have 12 or 13 or 14 useful cards next turn and not be limited to gaining one extra card and have 11 useful cards. And so these cards are really restricted in terms of whether they can function as plus buy or gains because you get plus one buy, but you need to get rid of a card to do that. So if I had 10 cards you know, and didn't have any plus buy in it, I could buy one card and go up to a 11, just using the natural buy that you have at the start of every turn. 
And if I added a forager or a trade route, I could get a second buy, so I could buy two cards, but I can only do that by trashing one of my original cards. And so at the end of that turn, I'd still have gone from 10 to 11, just like I did if I only used my original buy. Same thing with remodel. Uh, with remodel, I've trashed a card from my hand, uh, so I lost a card, and I can gain a second card that sort of makes it back, but I'm sort of breaking even. These cards can still be really valuable, though, in the right context for two reasons. First is, it can turn cards you don't want into cards that you do want. Um, so if I have, for example, uh, a copper, right, I can trash that copper to forage or, or a trade route, and I get a plus one buy, and if I've got two buys, and let's say I have like 20 money, I can use that plus buy to get two provinces instead of one. So sure, my deck only increased by one card. You know, I went down one copper up two provinces, um, but I functionally sort of turned that copper into a province. And so certainly if you have cards in your deck you don't want, and cards that you do want in your deck, these cards can be helpful because they're sort of functionally converting a card in your deck into the ability to gain an extra card that you do want. And so certainly if you still have junk cards around, these cards are definitely functioning as plus buy because you get rid of the cards you don't want and then you get the plus buy for the cards you do. Kind of similar for remodel. If I've got like an estate sitting around, I could remodel that into a silver or something. And so I both got rid of a bad card and gained a good card. Uh, so in a lot of contexts, these can function as plus buy or gains. The big limitation is going to be, let's say I've already cleaned up all my bad cards, and so now I've got a deck that's just 10 good cards, and I'm trying to acquire multiple cards per turn from there. Now I've got this big limitation of, I can't really get multiple cards unless I first forego or trash one of the old cards. And so that's when cards like Forger, Trade Root, and Remodel start to be bad. Uh, the second context where something like Remodel or, or Forger, etc. can be good is just in terms of in-game power control. And we'll talk about that more in a second in the, the next example. But for example, even if I'm not net gaining a card, sometimes I might want to do something like just turn a province into a province, which doesn't affect my deck at all, but can lower the piles. And so when we talk about strategically lowering piles in a minute, we'll see that this effect, even if it doesn't net me new cards, can also be gaining in a helpful sense of just affecting the number of cards left in the supply or even threatening to have the potential to. Now, a, a nice little combination to note with cards like this, cards like Remodel that turn one card into a better card, cards like Trade Root or Forager that give you plus buy but first require you to sacrifice one, is that these cards actually work well with cards that gain you the wrong card. So for example, take a look at this event, Banquet. Gain a card costing up to five and gain two coppers. Functionally speaking, Banquet's like two extra gains, right? You spend one buy buying Banquet and you're getting three total cards, right? So in terms of plus buy payoff, or gain payoff, this isn't really plus buy, this is plus gain, because you're gaining cards, you're not buying them. In terms of gaining, that's great, right? Plus two gains is a lot. What's the problem? <laughs> the cards you're gaining uh, necessarily are coppers, right? You could have just bought this $5 card directly, presuming you had the money, um, and the, the extra gains are, you're gaining two cards you didn't really want, right? So normally, Banquet's like a real weak card. You, you rarely get this, because it, I mean, Saving two money is just not worth getting two coppers. Coppers are really bad cards you don't want in your deck. We talked about that in the trashing video. But occasionally, you might have a scenario like this. You might have already trashed all of your bad cards, but you're still itting for plus buy because you've got a whole lot of money and you want to spend it. And you got some forgers around. Well, forgers can give you plus buy, but you got to feed something to them, right? you got to trash a card from your hand to get that effect. And so you might be in a situation where you've trashed all the bad cards, you've got two forgers sitting around. So what do you do? Each turn, you buy a banquet gain one of the cards, let's say a marker that you wanted, and now next turn you can trash two coppers to the forgers to get plus three buy back. Um, and so now, following turn, you trash two coppers, you have three buy, you buy one banquet, to put two coppers back in your deck, and then you'll have two buys left over to buy the stuff you really want. And so cards that shove bad cards into your deck can kind of jive with cards that turn bad cards into good cards. And you put together like forager and banquet, and you have a nice sustainable source of uh, plus buy. Or similarly, take um, Bureaucrat, for example, from the, uh, the base set, the card that just gives you a silver. Um, Bureaucrat's not very good. It's technically a gainer, but all it's gaining is silvers, which are not an amazing card. But let's say you got a Bureaucrat and a remodel around, and no other buys in the kingdom. You could build an engine that just involved playing Bureaucrats to get silvers, and then remodeling the silvers into cards you actually wanted. And then that would give you the ability to gain extra cards per turn. So sometimes you can take a card that gives sort of restricted plus buy, and then a card that gives you really terrible cards, put those together and you can gain cards you actually want. And so part of finding plus buyer gains in the kingdom 
um, might involve sort of indirect interaction between two cards. Um, a few other examples. Um, Rogue, for example, is a card that can gain you things from the trash. There's a few of these, but they exist. Uh, you're not always gaining cards directly from the supply. You might gain a card from other places like the trash. And uh, Border Village is another card, example of a card that when you gain this, you gain a cheaper card. So this is kind of similar to Forum. Forum gives you plus one buy when you, when you bought it. Border Village gives you plus one gain when you gain it. And so Border Village is kind of similar. And then it's almost like, it's like a village, right? Plus one card, plus two actions is literally the effective village. But it's a village that doesn't cost you a buy, right? So let's say you were gonna buy a $5 card like market anyway. So you buy a $6 Border Village instead, and you gain the market. So at one more coin, the, the basic difference here is you got your market anyway, and you got a village, but you didn't have to spend a buy on it, right? The, the buy that you were gonna spend on market, you bought Border Village, got the market anyway, and you got a village into your deck without extra buys. So Border Village is another good example of one of those sort of buy neutral cards, because much like Forum, you can get it into your deck um, without actually um, expending plus buy. Another example of a card that might look like it's plus buy and not would be Scouting Party. You'll see a lot of events like this, where they say plus one buy. And so you'll look at this and you'll be like, oh, perfect, there's plus buy in the kingdom. And I can just get scouting parties and I'll get my plus buy that way. That's not really what this plus one buy is doing. Uh, buying an event, just like buying a card, costs you a buy. And so normally, uh, if you wanted to buy an event, you would need an extra buy to spend on it. So if scouting party says plus one buy, it's kind of the same as forum saying plus one buy, which is that you're really just breaking even on buys. And so the way you should really look at scouting party is it's saying, if you got two extra coins, like let's say you have $7 and you just want to buy a market, instead of buying the market, you can first buy a scouting party, get its little effect here, which is look at top five cards of your deck and discard three, so a nice little benefit, and then go ahead and buy your market anyway. You didn't actually lose a buy doing this. You spent a buy on it and you got to buy back. So you buy the scouting party, then buy the market. And so for events, which are things that you buy, this is sort of the equivalent of being a cantrip. Right? We said we're an action card needing to have plus one card, plus one action for it to function as a cantrip because the implicit cost of every action is plus one card, plus one action. Well, the implicit cost of an event is you have to buy it. And so putting plus buy on an event is like making it a cantrip in that uh, you no longer have to account for an extra buy on the cost. You spent a buy and you got it back. And so this is sort of buy neutral. The real thing you're doing is spending two coins to get this effect, but you're not spending a buy. Now here's an example of an event that does actually give plus buy. Traveling Fear. Traveling Fear says plus two buys. And so because of that, if you buy it, you spent one buy, you now have two buys back. And so Traveling Fear is netting you one buy. And so in a kingdom with Traveling Fear, you can always just spend an extra two coins each turn to get an extra buy. And it also has this other benefit, which is allows you to top, top, uh, to top deck card to be buy them. So Traveling Fear, each time you buy it, is netting you one total buy. Uh, and then here's an example of an event that gains you cards. So Delve, we'll see it's it's buy neutral. And so you're gaining a silver, but you're not spending a buy on it. So Delve is sort of beneficial in two ways. One is that silver costs two uh, instead of three with Delve. So you could buy a silver for three, or you could Delve a silver uh, for just two coins and gain a silver. But I think arguably the bigger benefit of Delve is not that it makes silver 50% cheaper, it's that it makes silver no longer cost to buy. It means you can shove silvers into your deck however much you want if you have the money for it without even thinking about whether you have the buys to do so. So if you ever have two extra coins, you just buy Delve, it doesn't cost you a buy, and you put a silver in your deck. And so Delve is actually a pretty good card for big money kingdoms because it actually gives big money a good way to just sort of directly get extra treasures which it wants without having to take that detour of buying plus buy actions and putting those into the deck, which is usually what you know scares big money away from um, getting extra buys and gains. Uh, so Dell is an example of a card uh, that is helping you get extra cards in your deck. It's buy neutral and it gains you a card so that you sort of subtract this out. Dell is a gainer. It gains you a silver at no other cost. Now finally, let's talk about how having extra buys and gains can be influential to our in-game decision-making process. Here we have a simple kingdom from the base set that we've played through versus the computer to reach an in-game where there's only two provinces left. As normal, the computer played a simple big money strategy where they mostly bought silvers and golds. They might have a few actions in there. And we played a rudimentary engine that has trashed uh, essentially all of its starting cards and has drawn its deck with laboratories. And now we're deciding what to do with these two provinces remaining. But looking at our hand right now, 
We have 11 to spend between three golds and a silver, but we only have one buy. And so we're in this awkward position where we can't afford a province. But what happens if we buy a province? We'll take the temporary points lead, we'll go up to 25 to the opponent's 21, but there will now be one province remaining. And they can buy that province and then they'll retake the points lead and end the game because provinces will be empty. We could take a gamble on that. We could say, I hope my opponent's not going to hit 8 next turn. And we'd also have to hope that we do hit 8 in the following turn. Uh, and that's possible. I mean, we could still win if we manage to get both provinces before they can get one. But at the very least, that's a pretty risky proposition. So what's the next best thing we could do? Well, we could just buy a duchy here. If we buy a duchy, we'll retake the points lead. It'll be 22 to 21 now. And uh, that's a little bit better situation for us. Because now that whole problem of buying, buying the province is the opponent's problem. Right? We have the points lead. So even if the opponent can afford eight, if they buy the second to last province, now we can buy the last province. And because we have the points lead, we'll still have the points lead after that exchange and we'll win. It'll be 28 to 27. So buying a duchy puts us in a good situation vis-a-vis uh, -vis the opponent if they choose to buy province. The computer honestly might do that. But what if we're playing a smarter opponent? Uh, what if they're not falling for that? They can do the same thing we did. They can say, well, if I touch that second to last province, I'm gonna lose because you'll buy the last province. So I'm not touching it either. I'll buy a duchy too. I'll take a duchy after you take a duchy. Now the score is back 24 to 22. They're in the lead again. And if we keep following along this road, where we buy duchy, they buy duchy, we buy duchy, they buy duchy, eventually the duchy power runs out, they still have the points lead. And so now we're back where we started, but with no way to resolve it. So at some point, the only option available to us is going to be to take a province either now or midst or after buying a bunch of duchies and just pray that we can hit eight again before they can. And they're getting first crack at it, so the odds are not in our favor. So this is kind of a dicey situation to be in. This whole interaction here, you often hear the term penultimate province rule thrown around. The idea being the penultimate or second to last province. It's a dangerous province to take because it puts your opponent in a situation where they can end the game by taking the last province. And often if you get in the situation, you start to have to buy duchies. Um, but this makes a certain number of assumptions. And the main one is it's assuming we can only gain one key card per turn, right? The reason why taking the second to last province is very deadly is because your opponent can gain a province next turn and end the game. But what if we ask your gains or buys? What if we could take two provinces in our turn? All of a sudden, it's not that second to last province that's the dice you want to take. If there's two provinces left, it's actually a good thing for us to be in that situation because then we can take both provinces and we can win. As it so happens, this kingdom that we played through there's two more cards in that discard pile, the estate and the remodel. Now our situation looks a whole lot better. Sure, we're behind by two and there's two provinces left, but we can just take both provinces here. We've got a buy to spend, and we've got a card here, the remodel, which can gain us an extra card. And so here, we're no longer in a bad spot. In fact, we've got the win. We'll trash a gold, gain one province, and we can buy the second province. Well, if we enter action phase first, we can buy the second province and we'll be up 31 to 21, and we'll win the game solidly. And so because we had a second gain, we are happy to have two provinces left in the pile. That's exactly as many as we can take. And now, you know, you might be thinking, well, that's only because you had, you know, surplus stuff in your deck. You had 11 coins to spend. You had a, an extra gold. You'd be able to remodel the gold uh, and still have a province left to spare. And it's certainly better, um, but we can, we can do just as well, even if we don't assume any surplus money. What if that gold wasn't there? What if we had uh, a silver and two golds? So we have just enough to afford a province, just sort of mentally ignore the third gold. What do we do in this situation? Well, if we trash the gold to gain one province, we can't buy the second province. We could trash it and get a province and buy a duchy with the rest of the coins. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst. Uh, we take a points lead and that would probably be winning anyway, but we can do better. Even if we only had eight coins to spend, we'd still have a win here. Simple, remodel, province, gain province. Now that didn't score us any points at all. Right? We trashed a province, gained a province. It kind of looks like we're just spinning our wheels. Uh, we're back where we were points-wise. The big difference is now there's only one left in the pile. So if we buy it now, we take the same points that we did before, 25 to 21, but the game ends on our turn. Our opponent never has the option to come back and score and then retie it up or take the lead again. And so, this is part of the advantage of gains, is even if you're not scoring points, even if all you're doing is turning a province into a province seemingly unproductively, what you're doing is managing the pile so that they're the amount that you want them to be, so you can make sure the game ends on the turn you want it to, but it's usually yours. And so all of a sudden, that penultimate province rule 
no longer applies. Even if I can't score 12 points per turn, I can lower the province pile to the amount that I want it to be, then score the normal six points per turn I was gonna do anyway, but now ending the game and I win.